The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 27th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you've got a question... But you can't call in. Stevie's got your back. Send me an email. Send that off. Send it off early if you would to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. And of course, if you're inside our Tigers Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We start our day with a mixed bag out there, whether it's the sectors inside the S&P or the cash indices out there. Dow's up 13. S&P's up 13. NASDAQ's up 97. Russell's down 13. Semis are up 46. Trandy's down 94. You've got gold trading off four bucks. Silver's off a penny. Lights recruit is off a buck 14. Natural gas off four cents. 30-year treasury is printing down 19 ticks at 124.04. That is the December contract. We have rolled into the December contract out there. Leading the charge, Dow. Otherwise, the upside, you've got Costco up 25 bucks, Netflix 17, ResMed 14, Insulet Corp 12, Eli Lilly is up about 12, about one and a quarter percent there. Our shakers to the downside, it is Martin Marietta, 26 bucks, Vulcan Materials down 11, American Wood Corporate Woodmark. Corporation, they gave a scholarship to one of my kids. Uh, down about 1050. Uh, Super Micro, nine bucks, and Kava's down about eight bucks, about a six percent move there. So we got movers and we've got shakers. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Let's begin by looking at that New York Stock Exchange, the advanced client oscillator. It's uh, working off its overbought condition. It gets into an overbought condition uh, when it gets to the plus 150 level. It also means when you get to the plus 150 level, above one plus one, above plus 150, we are going to see higher highs at some point in the future. The problem with that, even though that's a true statement, uh, it doesn't tell us when that uh, test of new highs will come. It ha does have a divergence pattern where the advanced client oscillator has been making lower highs and lower lows out there. So pretty good indication that this should, uh, the oversold, overbought condition should continue to work as this works its way down towards that zero threshold level. Now it's going to do that as long as well, spot VIX remains below its 50-day exponential moving average. So the number to be watching there today is going to be 1676. We can see it was tested and it was rejected. And as long as price remains below that, that is uh, gives uh, buyers an edge. Out. Whoops, didn't mean to do that, but I did it. That gives buyers an edge out there. So both of those tools, it's actually bullish. Even though it's working off its overbought condition, we take a look at that advanced client oscillator. Uh, that does not mean that it is a top. I'm not saying that it's not a top. I'm expecting and anticipating a top. The question is when? Is it today? Is it tomorrow? Is it not until September? Why would it not be till September, Stevie? We're real close to September. So we do have topping patterns out there. Of course, they can fail and go on and make new topping signals out there. But if we take a look at the seasonal pattern for the S&P 500 over the course of the last uh, 96 years, what we'll see is that top typically comes in right around September the uh, 7th out there. So I believe that is um, maybe towards the end of next week. 
I'm not mistaken, out there. And then we typically see a move lower. There's typically a first bottom in September, at the end of September. And then there's another bottom that forms. And that's the key one back in October, usually between the middle to end of October. And that really begins the Santa Claus rally out there. So it does say, and it doesn't matter, folks, whether we look at a 96-year period or a 25-year period. 25 says we don't drop off the cliff until September 19th out there. The high typically comes in right around September 16th. If we take a look at a 15-minute time period out here, this says the top comes in around September 15th. Uh, so every every time frame, even the last 10 years, uh, again, the top comes in basically tomorrow or so over the last 10 years. And then it uh, bottoms out typically in the uh, beginning of October, end of September out there. So is it now? Is it uh, in a week or so? I don't know the answer to that. But let's go take a look at what the markets are communicating to you and I. So let's go switch panels out here. Let's go take a look at the um, ES Mini is what I've got up on my screen. So why don't we start there? Uh, here is the uh, multi intra time frame set of charts, the daily over on the upper left. Now, as I take a look at these charts out here, if you look at the bottom row, you'll see a 10 minute TD9 count top that's going to go ahead and complete at 1120. So another nine minutes from now. That should take price back towards the 5630 ish area. So keep your eye on that. Short of that, there are no other topping signals. Prices trade above profile levels on that bottom chart. So it's just a 10 minute chart right now to keep an eye on. If price closes above the high of the pattern, I don't know whether it's a high that took place between uh, 11 and 11.10 or it's going to be between 11.10 and 11.20. But whatever that high is, if another 10 minute bar closes above that, that tells us about a strong lament to move for that time frame. That's going to uh, confirm what we're seeing on the 15, 30, and 60, which says I want higher price. And then we go to the two hour chart. Where's that higher price? Well, a counter trend move, if that's all this rally is, would find resistance between 1561 and 5654, 5654 being the more likely spot. So that's what you would watch if, in fact, this TD9 count on the 10 minute, even if it does take uh, take hold out there, the question is what does it do on its retracement or pullback? And that green oscillator change level, we can see that it's changed colors recently out there. A test and rejection of that level would be a bullish signal. That would actually be on a 10 minute basis that could or would be a buy point. But on a further rally, it's at 56.54 level that I would keep an eye on. 56.56 uh, on the four-hour time frame chart. The five-hour time frame chart's around 56.60. If that's going to happen, that's going to get us back to the top of the daily profile at 56.65. If price were to close above 56.65 and a quarter, it would negate that uh, TD9 count pattern out there, and then we'd be looking for the next one to form. Uh, so that's what's going on. We take a look at the ES mini. Let's take a look at the NQ as well. Most of our listeners or traders are trading either the NQ or the ES mini. So that, and that's one of the reasons why we really take a look at both of those uh, for folks out there. So as these charts here populate, what we're going to do is uh, in the NQ, so you can, I'm going to go ahead and expand out the chart. And in the NQ here, what we can see is price pulled back and tested that green oscillator. Well, it's an oscillator and change line that uh, went ahead and uh, formed after a top and it changed colors. When it changes from red to green, it tells us the price oscillator is above zero or below zero. When it's green, it's above zero. When the price is above zero, above a green line, it tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero. Those are bullish conditions, period. Now, what we see out here on a daily time frame, you see a series of lower highs out there. So where's the resistance level here in the NQ? I would say it's the center area of that profile. I'd say it's at the 19745 level out there. But you didn't get a bullish signal on that daily time frame. Let's see what other signals we have out here. Let's start over on the right-hand side. You're going to go ahead and get a confirmed TD9 count top on that 10-minute chart here as we come into 1120 out there. No other tops that I see on that bottom row. You're dealing with resistance on the two-hour time frame chart. And that right now is up at 19,676. You see a close above that? We likely continue to move higher. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. 
But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Let's go out to Martinez, California and speak with Brent. Brent, thanks for calling. So nice to hear your voice two days in a row. Um, how are you this morning? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. And you? Doing wonderful. Thanks so much. And natural gas is on your mind. Uh, tell the folks what you're looking at and how I can best help you. I don't have a position. I just It looks like we're doing a round trip back to that uh, recent sure well. And I just wanted you know, you to take a look at it and see if there's anything in particular. Uh, I heard you say that was a, a TD9 count bottom. Is there something else down there that would make sense if it were to hit that level again to potentially make a trade? I, and that looks like, I think we're in bar five today on the daily, but just, yeah, I just wanted to take a look at it. Absolutely. So the TD9 count and Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom pattern that I'm referring to, folks, uh, was back on August the 5th. That was a, the TD9 count confirmation. Uh, the confirmation of the Rhodes Mintum Indicator signal came on August 6th. Now, it doesn't really matter that we've got two bottoms. And as Brent was saying, very likely. So the, the question is, is it going to go test that low or is it just testing the high? So the high of that swing point is at 2.083. We're 2.077 right now. I would say, Brent, if we close inside that swing point, again, below 2.083, odds favor that we go test that low. We go test it or we take it out. We are trading below profile support. We're trading below its red oscillator change line. We know those are bearish conditions. It still can be a test and rejection at day's end of that swing point. If it is, then that could be a bottom. But if we look at the intraday charts out here, what we don't see at the moment on a five-hour time frame chart is any kind of a bottom signal. On a four-hour time frame chart, and this bar here is going to go ahead and complete at 2 p.m., this says by day's end, you could get a, or you should get a TD9 count bottom pattern out there. No bottom pattern on the two-hour time frame chart. In fact, it's negating its TD9 count bottom. No bottom on the 60. No bottom on the, in fact, the bottom on the 30 was uh, negated at 11 a.m. this morning. So I'm not seeing a lot of great bottom options out here just that four hour time frame chart and then the other factor that we should consider uh, with natural gas is where are we at with regard to its seasonal pattern 
And we take a look at the seasonal pattern, that red vertical line, uh, Brent, that represents where we're at today. We typically see natural gas top around the uh, middle of June. In fact, if you look at the very bottom right hand, you'll see the bars. So we're really starting to come into an unfavorable time period. Now, when we look at September, uh, we can see that uh, things sort of uh, even out a bit. It's still a losing month, uh, or at least it has been over the last 33 years, but it kind of moves to a sideways. So it would appear from a seasonal standpoint that we could be coming into a, um, a seasonal so, uh, sideways consolidation that could last through the early part or middle of October, and then it really takes a decline to the downside. Now, that's 33 minute, 33 years. Let's see what we have for 25 years, that same pattern. Yes, that same pattern's out there. How about 15 years, Brent? Yes, that same pattern is out there. In fact, it says August typically sees a bit of a rally, and then September through the rest of the year we see moves to the downside. So natural gas is, is uh, you know, will it, will it continue to even move lower out there? Is the is the question, and I don't know the answer to that. But if it does take out that TD nine count bottom on the daily time frame, then our answer would be more likely, uh, yes, it does. So okay, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm just gonna <laughs> sit tight. I, it seems like it's really struggled. I, I've done a couple of trades in it here and there, going back away is at this point probably a couple of years. But I just I haven't really. I almost did something at that last bottom. I didn't, and, and that was a decent little move for whatever a week or two, but. It was. It doesn't seem like it's been able to really garner any kind of you know, lasting strength at all. It lasts for a period of time, and then it, it's kind of done with it. And there are yeah. times in the past where it run up to 10 bucks. I mean, there's other things that it just has not done recently. So, it's yeah, I'll just keep watching it. That's That really kind of gave me the answer. I was hoping he would look at the season, which he did, and, and it seems like it's not necessarily in a real great time for it either. It, it isn't, um, but, you know, and I've taken, I've tried to take this trade a few times myself. Um, and, and, you know, I really thought that on the trading day of August 8th, that, that that was a confirmation, it was the first confirmation that this was in breakout mode because it was the first time we had closed above. It was really the second day that we had closed above the top of its bear structure daily profile. Of course, we knew that at 2 232 was the TD9 count breakdown threshold level, the resistance level established by that count. And then we had a close above it, but we've never had, well, we, we did get two consecutive closes, but we closed above it on the 12th. And then we had a second consecutive close between two days on the 14th and the 15th out there. But of course, then price ran into resistance up the top of the profiles out there. So I wasn't expecting it, Brent, quite frankly, because of those signals. I was anticipating once we once we started moving lower that we'd find support at $2.19. But since we busted through that the last three trading sessions, yeah, it just it's uh, un it's it's just not looking great out there. So um, is yeah, there anything else a, I can look at? It's a tricky one. <laughs> yeah, it is. No, it, it, yeah, I think it, I'm going to hold off. I think there's better trades out there. It's just something I have been watching for quite some time, and I just – it hasn't really proven itself, to be honest with you. No, it's not. And that's where the seasonals kind of help us out a bit. Here is a weekly time frame chart with the October uh, profiles that are in there. Uh, here, you know, I, I, I don't even I, – I, I'm sure I could find somewhere some type of A to B equals CD pattern, maybe – um, and so you can see on a weekly basis, perhaps it has a bottom signal. But even today, we are trading below that support level. And so although it's a weekly and it won't really matter till Friday, but we're trading below that bullish structured weekly profile. And that low or that profile number is 2.09. And we're trading below that. So no matter what time frame we look at it out here, it just is in real trouble. Uh, which is we're moving into winter, but that seasonal pattern, you know, now is not the time based upon the uh, based upon the charts that we look at. So, Brent, is there anything else that I can do for you? I think that's it. It, it kind of confirms what I was already thinking. Just to great, kind of sit tight and and just yeah, whatever, just let it play out. It, it hasn't really been a great trade, honestly. So no, it look really hasn't. Places. It hasn't. It hasn't. Hey, Brent, always good okay, to hear well, from thank you. you. Thanks for, thanks for starting my day, and you have a wonderful, terrific Tuesday. That was Brent in Martinez, California. You know, now that we're into the request uh, period out here, what's going on inside the markets, let's go. We had one that came in yesterday. It was late in the uh, when I got to it. It was uh, Roblox. It was for Glenn uh, Michael out there. And uh, what we were talking about this yesterday, what was nice about yesterday, is I was able to share with Glenn that uh, this had completed a TD9, or was going to complete a TD9 count top yesterday. So that key level of resistance for you, Glenn, is up at that high, which is at 44.48. We are, um, you know, it's what should take place out here. Uh, what should take place is price should pull back towards 42.36. Now, what you would also see out here is there is a new profile that is formed below price. So we didn't have that information yesterday, but we have it today. What does that mean? 
That is a bullish signal out there. It doesn't mean that price can't get back to test that level of support. But overall, generally speaking, that's a bullish signal. When we look at the weekly time frame chart, that negated a TD9 count top last week. And this has generated an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. So let's go take a look at that. I'm going to draw in the A to B point, which takes up that TD9 count top. That TD9 count top did what it was supposed to do. It took price back to support, which was the bottom of its profile. That held, and that turns out to be the C point of that A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. So Roblox on a weekly basis, and don't, don't quote me right to the T, it's around 47.80 and change out there. Uh, that B point had volume on the A to B equals CD of 42 million shares, was taken out last week with 45 million shares. So the daily chart says might be a little bit of a timeout and pull back to test that green oscillator and change line. Or it could test the top of that profile at 41.62. That, quite frankly, would be the next buy point in going long Roblox up there. You do have resistance up at 47.20. That's the top of the monthly profile. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LARRYOG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Fridays for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYOG24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back. 
welcome up uh, back, folks. We're going to go take a look at the uh, charts for uh, applied uh, uh, materials out there. This is for Mohammed, and uh, Mohammed price right now is trading below the bottom of a daily profile and trading below its red oscillator and change line. We're trading below yesterday's low out there. The next area of support and where it's likely targeting is the 181.19 level out there. So that's what the daily time frame is communicating. The weekly time frame shows that price is consolidating with inside a bearish structured profile, trading below last week's low. Its level of support will be 180.04. So you got 180.04 support and 181.19. When we look at the monthly time frame, price is right now testing support which is the bottom of its profile, 189.10. So we got the month that's going to end on Friday. So you've got support that's held there, but not so on the daily and the weekly. I'm going to go with at this stage, at this moment in time, that AMAT should go target that 181-ish type area out there. Now, if we take a look at its stance steps, let's go see what this is doing out here. Applied Materials did have this nice move of six days to the upside. So um, I wish there was some kind of bottom signal out here because uh, that's a suggestion that this should want to move higher. It should, but but we've got to find the right daily bottom out there. Uh, this may be day number two to the downside. It could be that. Um, but in order for that to take place, what we'd have to see out there, uh, because you're two moves to the downside in a bull market, maybe it started that out here, uh, that is uh, you typically get a, a two to four bar knee jerk reaction low, two being the most bullish type markets out there. If we look at what's going on in a 30 minute time frame, right, if we're going to see some kind of bottom because of a, let's say, a two bar reversal period, we should see some bottoming patterns on the intraday charts. The 30 minute time frame chart does have a confirmed roads meant to mitigate bottom we look at this 30 minute chart we can see that the top of its profiles have acted as resistance. remember Stevie's got a two bar rule you've got to close above resistance two consecutive bars or below support two consecutive bars to suggest to us that that move is real we did see one bar on a 30 minute basis that closed above the top of its profile and that was right here on uh, at 10 30 in the morning and that was on august the 23rd otherwise profile and that so in essence that profile resistance level did in fact hold so with regard to aim at if this is really the start of a bottom out there you would see price close above 197.51 for two consecutive bars and then that would give you the confirmation or more of a signal that this could be forming some type of bottom if we look at the 65 minute chart and disregard its oscillator and change line i do not see any kind of a bottom signal out here and uh, lastly we'll go switch over and take a look at that 130 uh, there's 330 minute bars in a day. We like to use equal time frames. So the charts are giving us the same equal message as we compare bars. And here you've got a TD9 count top with price finding support at 193.72. So watch 193.72. Watch whatever it was that we took a look at on the 30 minute time frame chart out there. And that ought to give you a clue as to what applied materials intention is out there. So you had that nice six bar move to the upside on that daily time frame. I, I wish this were trading back above that red oscillator and change line. Always dangerous out there when it's below that level. So, Mohammed, I hope that provided you with the info you were looking for. Let's go on to uh, questions from Ann. This came in yesterday as well. So did Mohammed's. And we take a look at Ann. Her question was, do, do I see an A to B equals CD down pattern in the Qs or the SPIs out here? Now, i tell you what I'm going to do here. So we're going to switch charts. Um, uh, here I've got, uh, this is the Qs out here. Now I'll, I'll switch charts and go to where I've got the A to B equals CD down tools. But if you're asking me, coming from the high from August 22nd, the answer to that question is no. I do not see any kind of an A to B equals CD down pattern there. But nonetheless, let's simply go flip over to our black background screens out here. And let, let's take whatever other A to B equals CD patterns, if any, that I can identify and find out here. So we'll get over to this screen. We're going to go to our three time frames. We're going to put in the QQQs. And uh, the only thing that doesn't have doesn't have our TD9 count, roads meant to indicator signal tops out there. So if you were asking, and I don't because I don't know the, the you know the totality of the question. If you're asking, is this the A point out here, the high? It's all time high, uh, July 10th. And that the B point is out here down at the August 5th low. Are you asking, is this the C point at August 22nd? In other words, if we put that A to B equals CD pattern, and that's the question, the answer would be, I have no idea. I mean, it could, could be. 
Uh, but until it crosses the B point, we really just don't know. Now, the retracement out here was a 78% uh, retracement. So it fits into our 0.786 level was 77.54. So it's possible. If it is an A to B equal CD, if that's one you were looking at, Ann, then what you're going to need to see is a close below profile support. And that's at 467.62 for the uh, QQQs out there. As we come back here, let's just simply take a look at a weekly time frame chart. So on a weekly time frame chart, if we take a look at the last A to B equals CD pattern to the upside that formed, our low out here, the low of this pattern is going to start on the trading session of October the 10th, 2022. And the B point is going to be the high of July 17th, 2023, and the C point is going to be October 23rd. So we can see here as price got above the one to one level, the next upward price projection on the A to B equals CD pattern will get us to 512. But with regard to have we started an A to B equals CD to the downside, again, I just don't know. Now, if we do this here, let me go over to our intraday charts. And let's put up the QQQ and let's put up something like a 10 minute chart. So let's go intraday. Now here, if the question is, uh, what's the current A to B equals CD pattern? We're kind of in that same mode. We take a look at a 10 minute chart. In other words, it's possible that uh, the low that we've just seen come in here uh, at the 11, uh, between 11.30 and 12, it's possible that could be a C point of an A to B equals CD to the upside out there. If we take a look at A to B equals CD patterns to the downside, just uh, on the screen out here, we'd start with this high. Or I'm going to start with this high out here from 10.20 on October. August the 23rd, the B point out here, uh, what or could be the 12:40 a.m. a 12:40 p.m. time frame, and then the C point would be this high that came in at 15:50 on August 23rd. Here we can see an A to B equals CD to the downside. Uh, what we don't have out here for the 10-minute time frame was a bullish reversal candle, but doesn't really matter at this stage of the uh, game. We can also see that price has moved up into trend line resistance. So if we take a look at uh, that trend line resistance, let's look at the larger. A to B equals CD pattern out here. So the larger one on a 10 minute basis, we start up here at the high from uh, September, I'm sorry, August 22nd at 9.30 in the morning. The B point out here is going to be the uh, low uh, from uh, 15.50 on August 22nd. And then the uh, C point is going to be the high at 10.20 in the morning on October. So this has an A to B equals CD pattern on the downside. That would give us a price projection of 47101 out there. So maybe price gets down to that level. But in essence, I don't have any kind of other A to B equals CD pattern. Anything that's confirmed, anything that's below a B point to suggest that on the Qs we have that pattern. Now, if we take a look at the, um, the SPY, so let's go back to uh, this set of charts out here. Let's put the SPY up on our screen out there. And I believe what we're going to see, and it's really the same thing and the same setup. So or there's definitely no daily A to B equals CD pattern to the downside, no matter what. The retracement by getting back to where the A point would be negates that signal altogether. In fact, this could be talking about a large consolidation pattern. That consolidation pattern really with the low being that uh, August 5th low out there. So hope that helps you out. And uh, Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We come back. We're going to take a CLH for Hector. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the
the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97, and with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Still a mixed bag, but less so. You've got just the NASDAQ trading up four points. NASDAQ 100 semis are up 14 points. The other U.S. indices trading to the downside. We're going to begin taking a look at the CLHs for Hector and Patty. This is Clean Harbor Zinc. Uh, their specific question is, do I see any topping signs? Turns out, uh, Patter, uh, Patter, uh, Hector and Patty, uh, we've got a daily TD9 count top, a TD9 count top formed on August 22nd. Now, right now, today, prices test that green oscillator and change line. So its signal at the moment, since that level is held, is more neutral than it is bearish out there. Um, it's just neutral. It's not. It's it's sort of bullish, but because of that top, it's not really bullish. So that TD9 count. Now, the TD9 count top would be negated with a close above 245.52. So that's what you would want to look for on a retracement, further retracement. If price closes below, we'll call it 242.99, the current readout on the green oscillator and change line, then we would get downside traction. And the downside traction should take us towards the 230.38 level. In fact, that's the area where if this is only a counter trend move to the downside, that's where price would find support. But right now it's neutral. It does have a top. Weekly time frame has a wave seven top. That will confirm this week if price does not take out last week's high, 247.24. A bearish reversal candle would confirm a Rhodes Mentum indicator top. And here we can see, boy, we can really see that price needs to close below that oscillator and change line in order to gain any kind of downside traction. Last thing we take a look at the month. So you've got a top on the weekly. You've got a top on the daily. Turns out uh, this coming Friday, you're going to confirm a TD9 count top on the weekly, um, on, on the monthly chart. Now, remember those TD9 count patterns can confirm on the bar following bar number nine, just as the daily pattern did. So is the top this month? Is it next month in September out there? Right now, it's suggesting right now that this is the top. But we have to see these key levels of support begin to fail in order to really confirm that message of those topping signals out there. So Hector and Patty, I hope that answered your question. As always, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. John, inside the Tiger's Den, would like to take a look at Tesla. TSLA is the uh, ticker symbol. We take a look at the daily time frame. Here's what we know, John. On a daily basis, we have a consolidation with inside its daily time frame. And that consolidation, which is in essence the bottom of it, which is being tested as we speak, is down at the bottom of that profile at 208.34. Uh, resistance is between 224.14 and 234.68. That is the sell zone. And price rallied on the trading day of August 20th, 
right into that sell zone, and then it turned itself down. If today Tesla were to close below the bottom of that profile and certainly close below tomorrow, that would suggest that Tesla wants to at least go target the August 5th swing point. Whether it's the high or the low, that we don't know out there. But right now, as we speak, support is holding on the week on the daily time frame. Turns out that uh, this has a sell the D point weekly top out there. It turns out that support right now is being tested as well. And that's its green oscillator and change line. So you got the daily testing profile support. You have the weekly testing at 207.23 level. As long as price remains above that, then uh, can then then price may have just simply found the support set up by the sell the D point pattern uh, that formed out here that uh, went ahead and confirmed the week of July 19th out there. And you just simply pushes price back to support, which it did here really the trading day of August 9th. And it looked like that was curtains, but the following day it was right back above that level. So we're testing against support. On a monthly time frame, uh, Tesla has, it's trading back inside its profile, 214.60. More important where that closes on Friday than when we're trading on Tuesday at 1146. But nonetheless, we're inside profile. So you're testing support on the daily, you're testing support on the weekly. In one sense, you could almost say you're testing support on the monthly, but that's more difficult to really call as we speak right now. So, John, I hope that gave the information that you were looking for for Tesla. And as always, thanks so much for writing in. Now, as I recall, we had somebody write, uh, call in or write in possibly today's Tuesday. So it had to be last week. And the, and the question was, what did we see with regard to NVIDIA? Well, everybody wants to know what we're going to see with NVIDIA as well. So let's take a look at it, which we have up on our screens right now. And NVIDIA, as we had mentioned, had a TD9, I believe we mentioned, had a TD9 count top. And that went ahead and completed on the bar following bar number nine. That was a trading session of August 22nd. That same day, a new profile formed. And price had been trading with inside that profile ever since. Resistance is held, 130.75. So you know after they come out with earnings tomorrow, if price is trading above that, that's a very bullish signal. Support would be at 121.17. If they really were to disappoint on earnings and price were trading below 121.17, then we'd be looking at a move perhaps back to 103.43. Now that's coming from the daily time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart that has a TD9 count top ran into resistance in essence this week at the top of its profile, very close to it, at 131.60. So this right now is just consolidating with inside its profile. The support of that weekly uh, profile level is at 104.33. The monthly chart is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count top. But at the same time during this month, Prices pull back and test it and reject that green oscillator and change line. So Stevie's got to go with neutral here on the monthly. Um, neutral, neutral to bearish, I suppose, on the weekly. Um, I mean, this could be the high this week, could be the start of an A to B equals CD to the downside. Like I'd share with Ann, we really won't know until price would pass the B point out there. And, uh, and that kind of goes along with what we're seeing on the daily right now, that TD9 count top. But I'll tell you what. And we'll have more information when they come out with earnings. I believe that is tomorrow. Unfortunately, I will not be here on Thursday and Friday of this week as I go visit my youngest grandson out there. So looking forward to uh, that. So that's what we see when we take a look at NVIDIA. Now, I don't believe oh, you're welcome on Tesla. I don't believe we have any other requests. Let me just check the phones. See what is coming on this, if anything. We do. LB writes in, and LB says, can we take a look at URA? We absolutely can. So let's get the signal there. He says, looking for entry and exit points. You own long term. Want to start a trading position. And uh, thank you. So as we take a look at URA for the daily time frame, you know, what price did yesterday, it moved right into the sell zone of its bull, a bearish structured daily profile. And that was at 27.41. Um, you've negated or this is negated a TD9 count on the daily time frame. And then today price is pulled back and tested support. So right now, LB, on the daily time frame, you have, in essence, price consolidated between 26.25 and 27.41. The weekly time frame chart, which has an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside that has not yet generated a bullish reversal candle, has rallied right up into the bottom of its profile, 27.16. Now, the real level. Now this could be the end of the counter trend rally. Uh, if it uh, if it does if it does rally further, which the daily is saying it should, um, then what you'd be looking at is at 2803 level, the bottom of that bearish structured 
day, a weekly profile that price has been below for more than two consecutive weeks out there. That is where a counter trend rally would end. But it's really between 27.16 and 28.03. The monthly chart has a uh, TD9 count top that has uh, completed its task which was simply testing support, which was a monthly bullish structure profile. But yes, you are right. A price here does not, the month is not going to end until Friday. But if on Friday, price above 25.89, that would be a bullish outcome. And you're looking to, to add to your position. We can't add to a position. I mean, you could, you could do it today. The daily time frame is testing support, 26.25. I wish I had better news or some kind of news on the weekly chart out there, and I don't. So all that we can really do here, Lee, is take a quick peek at some intraday charts. Let's look at the 30-minute chart. Is there a bottom pattern? There is a buy the D point pattern. The price can close about 27.03. This should rally further. Real quickly here, let's put up a 65-minute time frame chart for uranium. I uh, don't have a... Uh, I don't have anything here. See you, Roads, with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe. To Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We've got the chart for Omega Healthcare on our screen. This is from a guppy inside the Tiger's Den. And this is on one one big bullish run out here ever since the lows that formed back in uh, 2024, February the uh, 5th out there. So it's been a nice little rally. Now, I don't see this rally stopping right now. We take a look at the daily time frame. You're trading above a green oscillator and change line. You're trading above profile resistance. Yes, it is trying to take out 
the um, the swing point here from August the second that had volume of 3.7 million shares. The high there was 38.85. We're certainly trading above that. A much lighter volume today. We're at 561. So maybe it does, you know, 1.2 million or shares or so. Doesn't matter. If price closes above that high, 38.85, uh, we should continue to see higher price. We're in bar number seven today of a TD9 count. You could get a topping pattern between tomorrow, Wednesday, and Friday. You could. Weekly chart is likely to confirm bar number eight of a TD9 count. That says the weekly top could come between this week and then the next two. And the monthly chart says, Stevie, I don't even have a clue what you're talking about with regard to tops. This thing wants to move higher out there. You closed above the top of its uh, weekly profile for two consecutive sessions last week. Um, this is suggesting that it wants higher price. If we open up the monthly time frame chart, where is higher price? You know, there is a bit of resistance that you've got out here, let's say at the uh, high of about 39.31. We're 39.16. If price can close above that, you are back to the highs out there. Now, I know you have a long-term position. You're trying to add to it from a trading standpoint. So in that case there, what you're going to have to wait for is some type of a pullback, obviously. Well, not obviously. I mean, you could, you could add to momentum type position out there. But you, I believe you were trying to buy some type of uh, a retracement. So if we take a look at, uh, you've got even a negated potential negated TD9 count top in the next four and a half minutes out there. If price closes above, this is a 30 minute chart, uh, Lee, if price closes above 39.12, and we're at 39.18 at the moment, that top will get negated. Uh, in fact, if you close above 39.13, that's a Rosemont indicator top, and the 30 minute chart would suggest that you continue to add higher out there. So, you know, the best possibility perhaps, maybe one of the best places for you to add, because this is such a bullish run, would be after what? A two bar pullback out there. So something for you to consider as well. Oh, as always, thanks so much for writing in. And thanks, folks, for being here on Terrific Tuesday. I want you to have a, a, a wonderful day out there. Please join me tomorrow, 11 a.m. sharp. Be safe out there. Take care.